if you walk out along the mangrove trail now, you're surrounded by dead trees. The leaves are crunchy, and in many cases, the leaves have dropped. Where there's a bit of high land, there are drifts of mangrove leaves that have, have washed up against the Chenier ridges. The salt marshes themselves have turned brown. They're normally bright green at this time of the year, buzzing with life, lots of spiders, lots of whiskered terns. Out there at the moment, it's pretty quiet. My name is Perry Coleman. I run a small consulting business called Delta Environmental Consulting. And my main fields of work are around salt marshes and salt, solar salt fields. Um, and I work uh, mostly in Australia, but have some pretty good international contacts in um, uh, salt lake research. So that's what I, I do. This is a really big area and it happened really quickly. And the evidence is absolutely clear what caused the problem. Because the brine in the ponds, in the pools amongst the salt fields and in the creeks is very, very much saltier than seawater. And the jarosite iron oxide colours across the mud come from acid affected brines. They're not normal. The, the, the blue-green algae mats that normally live on that soil have lifted off. They've virtually been pushed out and they're floating in the creeks. So no, none of that is, is normal. Ours are amongst the more southerly uh, mangroves. So in South Australia, we've got some patches up the Spencer Gulf. We've got patches here in Gulf St. Vincent and they're a really amazing habitat. You know, they've got so many habitat values. When it flowers out there, it smells like a brewery. I kid you not. <laughs> and the insects come from miles around and right after them come all of the micro bats and things like that. So at night time here, there's always little tiny bats flying around because there's so many insects because of the mangroves. And, uh, you know, and that's what makes them such a really um, amazing place for, for fish as well. It's shady in there. If you're a tiny fish, you can hide from the fishing birds really well in the mangroves. And you can venture out at high tide to the seagrass beds for food. And then you can come and hide back in the mangroves. And then you can go into the salt marsh and get food from there. So you've, you've got this continuum between what's occurring offshore and the mangroves and what's occurring in the salt marshes. It's very important, school groups, just like, it's a very popular place. And part of the problem is that people just don't, a lot of people don't realise how important the mangroves are to everyone, everyone, not just sections, to everyone. They protect our coastlines, that's why our coastlines aren't washed away. They protect our fish nurseries. So the importance of them is huge. Shorebirds use those areas. They fly all the way from Siberia and uh, virtually non-stop. And the national park here is called Winati Nati Pankara. And that means home of all the birds because the shorebirds that live here, they're not visiting us. They visit the Northern Hemisphere. And so this is the home of all the birds. This is where the shorebirds live in these salt marshes behind the mangroves. Bird-wise, very important. Fish-wise, very important both for feeding and as an area that the rivers have to pass through. And the salt marshes themselves are um, an endangered ecological community under the EPBC Act. Water suddenly, hypersaline water suddenly started appearing in these ponds. Small amounts at first. Mm -hmm. It ramped up in May and then by July we started seeing sick mangroves and sick gardens in the houses on the south side of St Kilda. By August, the trees on the common were dead and all the gum trees in the gardens had dropped all their leaves and the mangroves were seriously, seriously sick. Then the salt marsh as well started dying. Late September, after the Salisbury Council asked me what was happening and I put together a report for them, the Department of Mines and the Department for Environment and Water and the EPA and Coast Protection Board and the miner came for a trip around and we found areas of frank leakage where you could 
hear the brine trickling out of the banks. There were areas where the surface of the salt marsh was orange, bright orange with jarosite, which is an iron oxide, which is where the acidified brine had reached the surface and had brought iron oxide with it and that had covered all of the surface through there. A lot of salt marsh was dead. Mangroves were dead until you reached um, a deep creek. Wherever there was a creek that drained an area, the hypersaline and acidic brine would disappear back out to sea and the plants on the other side, away from the discharge, they were, they were all all right. A combination of of measuring the salinity of the water that's in the pools uh, of the, and the creeks and aerial imagery which shows how quickly it developed. So this, the twice a week satellites that fly over here, the uh, Sentinel-2, Geoscience Australia was able to track the death as occurring over just a few weeks. It's that size of an impact. It's not a small spill. This isn't somebody washing out a drum in a creek. This is seven kilometres of tidal wetlands. The council's uh, big tourism venture in the area, other than the adventure playground, is the Mangrove Trail. It's a really well-loved institution in South Australia. And the majority of the deaths in the mangroves have occurred around that boardwalk. And South Australia is so proactive in moving towards a sustainable environment and yet the one thing that we is so necessary is totally underappreciated. Right now, right at this moment, we need to have the impact on the salt marshes and the mangroves stopping. And the only way that that can happen is for the brine to stop leaking out onto them. And that's what I want to see. I want to see the brine actually removed from those ponds so that the tide can come back in across that area and leach all of the salts out of it so that we can start work helping the environment to regenerate itself. The people who can make that happen for us are the Department for Energy and Mining in South Australia.